Today's Wednesday, June 17th, 2015, and we're here at the Paris Air Show with uh, Randy Tinseth, Vice President of the Marketing at Boeing. Thanks for taking the time to be with us, Randy. Oh, it's a pleasure to talk to you again. Uh, you've just published your new uh, commercial market outlook. Could you give us the highlights of what might have changed since the uh, since your last look and uh, where you think the industry's headed? That's right. Uh, last week we uh, launched our new current market outlook for 2015. Over the next 20 years, we see a total demand of about 38,000 aircraft, valued at $5.6 trillion. I think the big change is continued growth in the single aisle market being driven by emerging and developing economies, as well as low cost carriers. We're seeing growth in the wide body region, and essentially we see the regional jet market staying about flat. There's been a lot of speculation on the uh, middle of the market, the 757 replacement aircraft. Can you comment on what Boeing's thoughts are about that marketplace? Well, I guess I would start by saying we have a lot of airplanes that we're working on right now. Our plate's full. Uh, we're bringing the MAX to the market in 2017, the 787-10 in 2018, I should say it's 2016, and then the 777-X in 2020. Determining the next step, I mean, we're looking at a number of things, but one of the things that people have been interested in is the middle of the market. I like to refer to it as the space between the 737 and the 787. We're working with our customers to ask, to answer the question, what kind of airplane do they want in that uh, category size, as well as range capability? And now we have to figure out, once they've spoken, how big is that market? What kind of technologies would you need in an airplane? what would the production system look like, and then do you have a business case that works? So we've got a lot of work to do, we've got a lot of things in the hopper to work on, we've got a lot of things, to, questions to answer on that marketplace. We have time and we'll take time to make the right decision. Okay. The uh, 737 MAX is uh, coming into play. There were, there were some, uh, some media out, outlets uh, reporting that uh, the numbers weren't quite there on the engines. Uh, we, we, we hear from GE that they are with, uh, with Lee. Uh, can you comment on that and uh, how the program is coming along and, and shaping up? Well, everything that we see on the 737 MAX is the airplane is performing to plan, the, the program's on target, and the engine's performing as expected, so that's all good news. Uh, frankly, a version of that airplane's flying on the competitor every day, so we're really getting a lot of data and information to show how our airplane will perform. Uh, in terms of orders, uh, you know, we're approaching 3,000 orders for the aircraft from more than 50 customers around the world. Uh, since we've been in the market, we've split the market about 50-50 with our competitors, so we're in a good place. Uh, and frankly, again, the development's going well. The airplane will roll out later this year, take to the skies early next year, and make its first delivery in 2017. We've seen the 787-9 flying here, the 787-10 is forthcoming. Uh, can you comment on how the, uh, the Dreamliner program is shaping up and, and what's moving forward with, uh, with the, uh, the 787 series? Yeah, in terms of the 787, now we've delivered more than 280 airplanes uh, to 31 customers around the world. Every day, about 575 flights, approaching 50 million passengers. Uh, the aircraft is performing quite well, especially in terms of fuel efficiency. The reliability is good and getting better. Uh, the way I like to think of it, in the last year, we've seen the reliability improve by about a half percent, which is a big change. And the total fleet utilization has gone up by an hour, so it's flying about 12 hours a day. Those are all good numbers and means that our customers, the airlines, are liking what they're seeing. And I'll tell you, passengers should love this aircraft. That's, uh, that's great. 777X is, is coming uh, coming forward soon. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a great airplane. Uh, your current 777, there will be a production gap between the current orders. You'll need probably 300 more orders to fill that. How confident are you that you'll fill the, uh, the existing backlog on the Well, in terms of the transition between the 777 and 777X, uh, you're right. We have to sell about 40 to 60 airplanes uh, a year to make sure we have a successful transition. Last year we sold a little more than 60, and I think we're over 30 so far this year, so we're well on our way. As a marketing person, I like though, to take a look at it year by year. You know, we're uh, sold out in 2015, we're sold out in 2016, uh, about 60% sold in 17, and that's where our focus is, especially on the back half of the year. Uh, and then in 2018, we start the transition in terms of manufacturing from the Triple seven, the triple seven X, and we'll just work through that. We see a lot of older freighters in the market uh, now coming uh, coming out of the market. Is there an opportunity for the seven 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 freighter, and can that be one of the one of the air, airplane models that fills the gap? Well, I tell you, I think the answer to that is yes. Uh, over the last two years, now we've seen growth in the freighter market again. It's 
grew 5% last year, will grow about 5% this year. Every 1% growth in that market is the equivalent to the demand for 10 freighters. Uh, we've seen triple sub freighter orders here at the air show, which is a good thing. Uh, we saw a commitment to the 747 freighter as well, which is a good thing. Uh, and I think not only will it help us with the transition on the 777, but it helps us build the 47 product line as well. The, uh, the VLA market uh, seems to be uh, changing as, as well in your forecast. I think it's a little lower this year than it has been in the past. Yeah. Uh, does, is that just for passengers, or does that include the freighter market as well? And how do you see the, that market shaping up in oh, the future? Yeah, well, roughly, uh, we see a demand for about 540 aircraft roughly about a third for freighters and two-thirds for passengers. I think our forecast re reflects the reality and market trends that we've seen over the last 10 or 15 years. It's as simple as that. Um, the, this A380 has been kind of a market disaster. The 747 uh, Intercontinental has been slower to take up than, than we'd expected. It's just a market that hasn't performed. Smaller airplanes like the 787, 777-777X, A350, A330neo, is really where the heart of the demand is. So it should be no surprise that airplanes like big A380 are struggling. They're just frankly too big and they're too expensive to operate. We appreciate your time, Randy. Thanks, thanks so much for being with us today. Well, thank you very much.